wars. Okay. Would you mind asking any questions? No, I don't mind. Happy Valentine's Day. Same, same to you. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Lynn Haven City Commission on this beautiful Valentine's Day. I'd like to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day. I hope you've got lots of flowers and candy. And uh, gentlemen, if you've neglected that, I just left Publix and there's a long line, so hurry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on schedule. At this time, I'd like to ask um, Commissioner Shad if he would to please ask the invocation to open our meeting. Thank you. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us another day of life, and thank you so much for giving us a day of bright sunshine in which to carry out our business and yours. We ask that you, pro we ask that you provide us with the wisdom that we need to make sound decisions for the future for our community. We're grateful and thankful for you and your presence in our lives because you surely look after us. We have a beautiful city, and we thank you so much for helping us and our goal is to make it better. Continue to bless those in service who defend our country so that we may in turn carry out what this country stands for. Bless all of our citizens, those who are sick, please look after them. Those who have lost loved ones in the last week, please provide guidance, consolence to their wives. Continue to provide us with the strength and the courage that we need to restore this country to the greatness that it once was. For these things we ask in your precious name, amen. amen. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three on the agenda is the mayor's report, and I had uh, several items I wanted to just mention, and uh, I wanted to start um, by um, just saying that today marks 14 days since I have retired from Bay District Schools, and I'm just learning about um, how much time that you can have in a day. And uh, one of the things that uh, I really want to um, get busy on right away, um, several of our boards, um, the Leisure Services Board, the Beautification Board, and some of those boards that have, have not met or have not been active in a long while, um, I do have some time um, that I'd like to devote to that. And I'll be um, looking through, I think there have been several applications turned in. But if you are interested in serving on a board with the city, there's a generic type application just to fill out. And um, if you'll let me know, and I'll be posting on Facebook and putting it in the newspaper and some other places about possibly a meeting time when all people who are interested in those boards could come together and we could get kind of get that going and, and get those boards moving. So I'm excited about that possibility. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to mention. Um, if you remember, um, year before last, um, uh, Kenneth Tucker served as our um, parade grand marshal. And um, if you um, haven't read his book, it's called The Last Roll Call. And he was a World War II Air Force um, hero. And he passed away since our last um, meeting. I had the um, distinct honor last April of singing, his, uh, singing for his 90th birthday party. And uh, he leaves behind his beloved wife, Jenny, and they live over on 2nd Street right by Porter Park. It's the prettiest little house ever. And um, anyway, it just saddened my heart that he's left us. And I just wanted to mention his name today and how proud I was to have known him. And uh, a couple of other uh, things. Um, I've, I was able to attend the groundbreaking for the, um, the boat ramps that are now under construction at Porter Park. Um, I was able to attend the 100th birthday celebration for Miss Lottie Faye Peacock over at Summer's Landing this past week and present a proclamation which made February the 8th, 2017, um, Lottie Faye Peacock Day in Lynn Haven. So very happy about that. 
and uh, also was able to attend a meeting um, with the Lieutenant Governor uh, last week and was able to speak with him on some of the issues that concern all of us here in Lynn Haven and was encouraged uh, by his response and his, his commitment to small municipalities like ours across the state of Florida. So that pretty much um, takes care of my report and um, I have a couple of proclamations that I need to read um, before moving on to uh, the City Commissioner's reports. Um, the first one is a proclamation um, concerning Clean Up, Paint Up, Fix Up Month. And this proclamation, um, this has been something that's uh, a tradition in Lynn Haven for the month of March. And whereas many of the municipal, municip can't get it out, municipalities of Florida are participating in campaigns to promote the beauty, health, sanitation, and neatness of such municipalities, and whereas the Operation Cinderella Committee of Panama City and Bay County is especially desirous that the city of Lynn Haven be foremost in said characteristics of beauty, health, sanitation, and neatness, and whereas the season of the year now beginning is the appropriate season for general spring cleaning on a citywide scale as well as on an individual basis, now, therefore, I, Margo Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2017 as Clean Up, Paint Up, Fix Up Month, and urge the people of Lynn Haven to make it their personal responsibility to join in this worthwhile campaign to clean up and beautify their individual properties, the adjacent areas, and the entire community. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida to be affixed this 14th day of February 2017. Um, do I have a motion to um, accept this proclamation? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion from the board about the proclamation? Um, any discussion or comments from the audience concerning the proclamation? Yes, ma'am. Libby Tennell, 505 Virginia Avenue, Lynn Haven. Uh, years ago, the city used to pay to pick up the trash that people put out. And now the city, the people have to pay for it. And I think that ought to be canceled for March so people will clean up and get rid of a lot of junk in the yard. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tennell. And uh, full disclosure, Ms. Tennell spoke with me yesterday about her idea that um, Lynn Haven could possibly consider um, during the month of, of March to sort of have a um, sort of a non-committal month that you could just put things that you cleaned up in your yard and we would pick them up. I think amnesty is a good word. Thank you. My English major mind just went away there. Um, so there would possibly be an amnesty. So um, at this time, um, I would like to ask um, the commission if anyone would make a motion or possibly discuss the possibility of during the month of March um, allowing this type of, of amnesty so that residents would be encouraged to clean up. And, and I, I think it's a great idea because with us kind of moving into hurricane season, if people were willing to get out and pick up branches and leaves and all that around their yards, that would be great. So any discussion or comments? I'll also move, but I'd like to add before somebody makes a second to it, this time of the year is extremely important for people to clean up their yards. Uh, too, too many times in, in my area, I live on Alabama Avenue, in the spring people get out, they trim the bushes, we'll eat everything, they throw it on the side of the street to be picked up, but they cover up the drains, that drain the water when it rains. And every time that happens, it just exacerbates a flooding situation for us. And it is important, and I think a lot more people would be willing to do it if they could be assured that there would be an extra pickup or so during this time. If we could get the word out to them and say, well, on this date and this date, you know, we're going to pick up all this stuff. Uh, during this last rain, I affectionately call on my block, I, I have Lake Alabama. You get a heavy rain and you're almost knee deep in some sections of it. But, you know, two root causes. One is the trash. Second one was, and they came over, the city came over and sent their crews out. And they found out in the older sections, you have tree roots now that are invading the sewer lines, the wastewater lines. So the water just can't flow through them. And I was glad to see the uh, city people out there in subsequent days after that 
cleaning out at one particular pipe. And, and during the storm as well, they were. Um, so um, is that a motion that this would be? Yes. So um, there's been a motion for amnesty on picking up of trash and debris during the month of March for the city. Is there a second? I'm, can we discuss it without a second? Oh, I of guess course. I can second it and we can still sure. discuss okay, it. Okay, a second and then discussion. Yes. Okay, so I'll second it and then uh, we'll discuss it. I, I think it's a great idea. I, I want to say we tossed it around once before. My concern is the impact on the system, impact on staff, and are we... Are we talking about all the month, month of March? Are we talking about just maybe a day in March or two days? You know what I'm saying? I just, I don't, you know what I'm saying? And what is the monetary impact? And I mean, I'm afraid people will just <laughs> go crazy with it and we'll be just, and then we, we can't meet the need. Because I know we have the two trucks now, whatever. So I'd, I'd like city manager's input on, is it something we can manage? Do we do the whole month of March? Do we do a couple of days and get the word out? And then what about people that's already scheduled you know, from March and have already committed to paying. And I, was, I was thinking along your same lines, but I was thinking the days that are regularly scheduled anyway, that we would just stay on that schedule and then they just wouldn't be charged for it. Does Regular day schedules for the um, claw truck. For the what? For the claw truck. Because aren't we talking about the claw trucks that pick up the debris? Okay. That was my thought, and the city yeah. manager. Well, is it my understanding, are we talking about items that are a special item that needs to be picked up? versus your regular trash, which is included as part of the water bill itself. Is, is that right. what I'm hearing? Yeah. I, I think that we're talking about special items, such as maybe old appliances that have been sitting around, old pieces of furniture, limbs, debris, trimmings. You know. Well, I mean, we typically pick up the, the limbs and debris. That's part of the, the trash pickup. It's the other things, such as washing machines, dishwashers, Mr. Baker, correct me if I'm wrong. Those type things are special items because they have to be disposed of in a certain way. Is that correct? Okay. So, uh, yeah, please. I'm um, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, you're exactly right. The, the yard debris we do pick up. The special pickup for March, I actually think is a good idea. It'll help us. I know it's, we're going to be overwhelmed, but I think we can still do it, and I think it's a good, you know, something to do for the citizens. And, as far as the, the revenue we would lose, I'm not sure. That My only concern would be um, illegal dumping. You know, when people find out that we're doing that, what to be very careful about. You know, they're telling all their friends from other cities, bring it over, they'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That happens. But I, I do think, you know, one month is, we could do that. I think for, we could. The, for the entire month, then, you think it's good for the month, then? I do. And, and I going do. with, I like Mayor said, with, the, aunt, with the schedule already. Up, clean up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is it possible if perhaps we can reword the motion to say that we would waive the fees for special, special items? Special pickups. Special That's the pick only up. thing we charge for is a special, special pickup. Pick like up. you said, mm -hmm. uh, mattresses, refrigerators, metal, wood. Right, those type things. Right. Okay. And, and I think when I was talking about the limbs and the debris, I think that from the conversation I had with Mrs. Tennell, she was thinking more, too, in terms of maybe there being additional days, you know, in case people wanted to really do some cleaning and spend right. several days. We, we would keep our schedule. We run the city. Um, every house gets run once, one day a week, mm -hmm. even for special pickups. So That sounds great. So, Mayor, if I may. So just for clarification, Bobby, just so folks know, I mean, you can't clear your residential lot, pile it up out there in the right of way, and we're going to pick it up. There's a reasonable amount. We address that probably once once a month, too. It's not for lot clearing. It's for the occasion, right. three, mm -hmm. four trees, et cetera. Uh, there's no charge for that currently. Right. It's what we so, consider routine yard maintenance. Right. We're going to we're gonna run that. Uh, I mean, if you go back and you look at your average output as far as the landfill for these special pickups, I'm sure because, you know, frankly, I take advantage of the county's amnesty. And when I go out there to the landfill, mm -hmm. there's literally almost a mile of, of trucks there. So I anticipate, like you, there's the going to be a, a volume. So yeah, I think we should also it. anticipate, you know, especially that last week, this might be a, a five-week process. And I think it's part of our advertisement. We need to, if we do go forward with this, we need to let citizens know it might not be, it might be there for maybe a little longer than a week. Or do right. you think Depends you can still cover it? Because your volume may double is what I'm saying, and if you've got resources to cover the city in one week, it might take a week and a half or so, it is could. what I'm saying. It could possibly. And, and if we 
run or it this. could be that if we didn't get your day we'll try to pick it up the next if that next day load is lighter we'll circle back and try to finish up the previous day say so we might want to contemplate a you know might in actuality be a five-week process right if we're running behind so if we do four weeks it might actually be five and, and I had one other question um, and probably for the city manager and also for the public works director mr. Baker um, do we could we consider the option of possibly offering some overtime to our to our workers um, who would you know if they wanted to be willing to work a little after it's always, it's always an option we usually it, exercise that the problem with the overtime is we can't dump it the dumps right. close on us right. like um, a Saturday we can't run a Saturday because certain dumps won't even open but it, even if it gave them time to get it loaded so that they could start the next morning you know in other words so they're not having to work 30 or 40 minutes or an hour or two after right. after time because it's it's obviously going to put some burden on them and if they saw some financial reward then possibly that would help ease the burden some right too. yeah but we can only like I said work so late until the dumps close got it got it so do we need to amend the motion for special pickup? Yeah, yes, if that's to clarify the motion. <clears throat> Commissioner Shad, do you mind restating your motion and add the special pickup, please? Thank you. <laughs> I, I believe the intent of the motion is that we would schedule during March right, special trash pick up right, and not charge the normal fee that we have charged in the past for those special items the period of the time to do that is going to be determined by the city manager and his staff because that's been expressed we don't know whether it's going to be three days two days or what right. So Thank you. That, that's the motion I'll make. Is there a second for this amended motion? And I'll amend my second to meet that motion. Thank you. There's been a motion and an amended second. Um, is there any further discussion from the public on this item? Okay. At this time, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the motion has passed. And uh, Mrs. Tunnell, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, moving on to the next proclamation, um, this is for uh, Publix Appreciation Day. Um, whereas George Jenkins opened the first Publix market in Winter Haven, Florida in 1930, and whereas in 1940 Jenkins affectionately called Mr. George by his employees opened Florida's first supermarket, and whereas Publix supermarkets are consistently awarded prestigious honors such as the 100 Best Companies to Work For from Fortune magazine, and whereas Publix regularly conducts charity drives raising money and food for such charities as Special Olympics, March of Dimes, Children's Miracle Network, and United Way, and today there are over 1,000 Publix stores, and whereas the five Publix stores in Bay County raised $204,874 during their 2016 annual United Way Workplace Campaign, Whereas Publix leadership matches an additional 75 cents for every dollar collected through Publix charities, and whereas Publix has fully embraced United Way of Northwest Florida, Live United philosophy, and whereas nationally the 2016 campaign results for Publix is an amazing $62 million, which includes public associate pledges working in public stores nationally, and the Publix matching funds from the Publix supermarket's charitable gifts. Whereas Publix supermarkets are only located in the Southeast United States, they rank in the top 10 companies of United Way in America and are a fine example and lasting legacy of Mr. George's vision and compassion. Now, therefore, I, Margo Deal Anderson, Mayor of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, Florida, do hereby proclaim February the 27th, 2017, as Publix Appreciation Day throughout the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, and ask everyone to join me in thanking Publix Supermarkets for being an outstanding member of our community. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida to be affixed this 14th day of February 2017. Is there a representative from public supermarkets present today? I'm, I'm thinking that probably this pro proclamation will be read again on the on the actual day then at, at the supermarket. And if you would, just join me in a round of applause for their um, giving spirit in our community. Thank you. I think we still need a vote for the proclamation, too. I think it was a vote, too, um, for the amnesty.
Okay, I'll have to ask the attorney <laughs> again. I'm looking back at the proclamation for cleanup fix up day, if I may back up just for a moment. We did a motion to accept the proclamation and a motion for, for the amnesty, or did we only do the amnesty? There was a motion to <laughs> accept the proclamation, and then there was a motion for the amnesty. I, I so, thought we did too. Yeah. So, okay. my, my apologies. Okay, no problem. We're good. Okay, so at this time, um, is there a motion to accept the proclamation for February 27th as Public's Appreciation Day? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Discussion from the public? Okay, please call the roll, Mr. Schubert. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the motion is passed. Moving on to item number four is the city commissioner's report. Commissioner Shad, do you have a report? Uh, just to add a few comments that I made earlier, I, I just like to thank the city employees when we've had these terrific rainstorms that create so much havoc in our city. Those people, I've talked about the city employees that react, they're out there <laughs> knee deep in water sometimes. It's rainy, it's wet, it's miserable, but they're out there working, trying to keep those drains as open as they can. And we don't always see them because sometimes it's night and they're out there in the dark or early in the morning. They're out there working. And Bobby, I'd like to thank you and your crew for the extra work that they've done this year because they've been out and about cleaning ditches and trying to help us to alleviate some of the uh, wet spots we have. Shall we have a round of applause for the, for the yes. crew? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> does that complete your report? Yes, it does. Um, Commissioner Ashbrook? Uh, yeah, I uh, had a couple of meetings with our state representative, uh, but there's not much there to say right now. He's kind of getting ginned up for what, what's going to be a little bit of a testy uh, legislative session. Uh, we had the uh, groundbreaking, as the mayor has stated, for uh, Porter Park, and uh, I think the end result of that park is going to be quite nice, but I think we've got 90 days of, of uh, patience ahead of us because it is a heavily used uh, boat launch and, and uh, not just by the citizens of Lynn Haven, but by a number of people who see it as the first bay launch that they can get to as they come across the Bailey Bridge. So if we'll just be patient till May, we'll probably have a first-rate boat launch operation there. but. Uh, I would just encourage everybody to to uh, to uh, be as patient as they possibly can. And outside of that, I don't have anything other report. Thank you, um, Commissioner Barnes. Just want to echo uh, what my other colleagues have said about the boat ramp. I think the boat ramp is going to be a premier boat ramp. Uh, I want to thank the city staff, city engineers, uh, for securing the funding to make this pro uh, this project happen. Um, I was out there this past weekend, and I can honestly say it's used by a lot of people. And so uh, we just ask for your patience, and I think you're going to be very, very happy with what you see with the end result. Thank you. Commissioner Friend? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, also, the boat ramp, appreciate everybody that worked on that. It was, it was well attended, and uh, it was good to see all of us out there. That was a good one. A um, couple other things. We do have a uh, 5K coming up, Sheffield Park, run for the cookies. You can't run for cookies, you know, Girl Scout cookies. Uh, but that's going to be fun. Look forward to seeing everyone there. But also, as you know, I traveled to the MPOAC meeting, and uh, we had a good meeting down south. And uh, I'm happy to report that the MPOAC did approve coming to Bay County in November to have their meeting. Um, so for those that don't know, the MPOAC is made up of elected officials from all over the state of Florida that serve on their respective MPOs or TPOs, uh, which is the transportation planning organization that I sit on for Lynn Haven uh, here in Bay County. And so they did, we did pass for us to have it here because we're having it, and I'll tell more about this later, but we're having it in conjunction with the Emerald Coast Transportation Symposium. And uh, when I, uh, that goes all the, back to, all the way back to when I was the chair of the TPO, I worked really hard on trying to get that symposium, which is a fantastic thing to, uh, to attend it's all things transportation, and it's, it's, it's really, really well done. 
Uh, but anyway, we're, we are finally going to have that in Bay County at Bay Point. And so uh, we've gotten the MPO AC again is going to be attending that. We've got one more that I think is that I can't say yet that I hope is attending as well. So we have a lot of people, a lot of elected officials right here in Bay County. So I encourage everyone, and I'll say more and more about it as we come, but I just wanted to let everybody know that we did pass that while we were down there. So that's all. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number five is the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. I have two items. The first is employee of the month for January. If Ms. Sear back there, Ms. Suzanne Fogel could step forward, please. See how well I can project. Suzanne's a customer service rep.
Wow. Huh. I know. <laughs> I, w I would just like to also add oh. that people like um, Officer Caitlin, who's always, you know, on top of things, um, she took the time to, you know, make this nomination so that everyone would be aware. Of course, most of us in this room have either been on the crosswalk, or our children or grandchildren have, and we all know um, uh, Miss Willie Stanley. But um, Caitlin, thank you for taking the time to honor such a special person in our community because you made the award possible. Thank you. Mayor, I can also say that I was one of those little children that she helped across the road, too. So thank you, Ms. Willie May. I appreciate it. Okay. I, th I think um, if I can uh, get tears out of my eyes, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That was a very special beginning. Um, let's move on to our consent agenda. If you were here today to honor someone and you've had enough of our meeting, no one will think badly of you if you decide <laughs> to leave at this time. But uh, we hope you will stay on with us. Um, Madam, items, yes. We have the city attorney's report. I, I skipped the city attorney's report. Thank you, Commissioner I, I, Shad. I have nothing to say after that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on into the consent agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Shad. Um, what I will do is read each of these items together, ask for a motion in a second, then see if there's any of the items that the commission wishes to discuss or ask questions of staff about, and then also give the public the same opportunity. The consent agenda includes the minutes from the last regular meeting on January 24th. Um, item number eight, approve the purchase of services for the removal of sand and grit from the digester tanks in the amount of $63,600 from Polston Applied Technologies, LLC. Item number nine, to approve grant agreement number 17-36 with the Northwest Florida Water Management District in the amount of $49,825 to assist with the Ninth Street Water Main Replacement excuse me, water manage, I'll get it out, water main replacement project. Item number 10, approve the task order with Panhandle Engineering in the amount of $19,825 for the fifth phase of the city water, city's water main replacement project. And item number 11, to approve the Gulf Power Storm Restoration Staging Site Agreement. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. There has been a motion and a second. Are there any items um, within the consent agenda that any members of the commission would like to ask questions or to discuss? Um, would anyone from the public like to ask a question or make a comment or discuss any of these items? Yes, sir. Must be related. <laughs> it's part of that subject. One of these items. I, okay. I might have missed something. Uh, I know commissioners. Would you state your name and address? Uh, Rich please, Walker, 11 to 6 Michigan Avenue. Thank you, you were praising people and giving presentations. Very good. Um, but I might have missed something this week. Um, I know commissioners are not appreciated. And when they disappear from the face of the earth, they're not mentioned. I think you lost a commissioner this week, last week, Commissioner Haynes. I would like to remind the commissioners of his service, and uh, I would think that you would uh, like to say something about it. I, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention, and um, my father was a former commissioner, um, Louis Deal, and he was um, well acquainted with and thought the world of Mr. Haynes, and I did have an opportunity you know, to have some um, interaction with him. I did not know him well, so I'd like to just turn it over to maybe one of the commissioners who know who knew him uh, better. And I do apologize for that oversight because that would fall on me. 
anyone else like to comment about Mr. Haynes' service? I guess I'll or? go ahead and start off, Mayor. I, I had the opportunity to serve with Commissioner Haynes uh, for the 12 years that he was on the City Commission. Uh, I can honestly tell you that Commissioner Haynes had this city's heart. He cared about what took place in this city, and he especially cared about the people that worked for this city. Um, he went out of his way to find all types of grant monies so that the city did not have to spend its own money in order to have projects uh, Completed. One that will always be memorable to me is on Highway 390 where Mort School Road is. Commissioner Haynes thought that that was a, a safety issue for this city, and he went out and he sought the grant money to build that overpass. And, um, and so he, he is the, the person who was responsible for that single handedly. Uh, Commissioner Haynes is a great guy. Uh, when when his service was done with this city, uh, he was done. And uh, but he was truly a uh, uh, the biggest cheerleader for the the employees, and he definitely loved this city. And he will be sorely missed. Thank you, Commissioner I, Barnes. Would anyone else go yeah, ahead? I also had the opportunity to serve with Mr. Hayes. Uh, he was sort of a mentor to me the first year or two that I was on the commission. Uh, I've gone to Tallahassee with him a couple of times when he was lobbying for grant monies. I saw him in action going from door to door with the various senators and people over there. And, and that's basically how he got that overpass. I mean, he was determined that that was a serious uh, safety issue and that they should build that overpass. And he wouldn't take no. He'd go knock on the doors, he'd sit down, he was very direct. I mean, you always knew where Harold stood, but he was very direct with them. And, and the city owes a lot to him over the years for what he has done for the city. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor, can I say yes, ma'am. You'll, you'll need to come up. I'm sorry, Ms. Tennell. You, you may stand and play. You may stay. Just state your name and you may stay there. Yeah. My husband was killed yeah. on that. And after that, he pushed, and he finally got the traffic light there. Thank you for reminding us of that. Sorry again for your loss. Anyone else? I did not serve uh, with Commissioner Haynes. He served before I arrived, so I did not know him personally. But uh, I've heard good things about him. I just never met him, didn't know him. He was on the commission, and he served uh, prior to my beginning serving. Thank you, and um, Mayor, I'll just yes, simply, I'll just simply say I didn't I didn't know him either, but I've I've heard nothing but good things about him, and I certainly can't overlook the fact that those that, everyone that have served before uh, before us to lay the foundation that we have the, the honor to sit here and serve you all now, uh, and have such a wonderful city to serve. So thank you, Mayor. And again, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Walker, for bringing it to our attention, and perhaps it would be. Um, timely to perhaps at the next meeting to offer some type of proclamation in honor of, of Commissioner Haynes. So let's maybe <clears throat> consider that. Um, so moving back, um, did anyone else from the public want to speak? I apologize, I didn't ask. Okay. Um, moving on to the consent agenda then, um, items 7 through 11. There were no comments or questions from the board, and I had opened it to the public. Did anyone else have a question or comment about those items? Okay, at this time, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll for the consent agenda? Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. And so the consent agenda stands approved. And then moving to old business, item number 12 would be the second and final reading of Ordinance 1027 concerning Fuel Depot Parcel B, replacing Ordinance 1013. Um, Mr. Schubert, would you please read the uh, ordinance? An ordinance revising the effective date of ordinance number 1013, which annexed into the municipal limits of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, approximately 93.87 acres of the Lynn Haven Field Depot property, as more particularly described in ordinance number 1013, 
amending section 6 of the ordinance number 1013 and providing an immediately effective date. Thank you. Um, this is the second and final reading. Is this an actionable item? It, yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, this would be an actionable item. Um, is there a motion from the commission to approve? Move approval. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions from the board? Discussion or questions from the public? Okay, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mary Anderson? Yes. So item number 12 stands approved. Moving to item number 13, the second and final reading of Ordinance 1028, Fuel Depot Parcel C, which will replace Ordinance 1014. Um, Mr. Schubert, are you ready with that one? Yes. Okay. An ordinance revising the effective date of Ordinance number 1014, which annexed into the municipal limits of the city of Lynn Haven, Florida, approximately 49.81 acres of the Lynn Haven Fuel Depot property, as more particularly described in Ordinance number 1014, amending section 6 of the ordinance number 1014 and providing an immediately effective date. Thank you. Is um, there a motion for acceptance? Move approval. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion on item 13? From the board? From the public? There appears to be none. Uh, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll for approval? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mary Anderson? Yes, and so item 13 stands approved. We'll move right along uh, to new business. Item 14 is discussion and possible action regarding approval of a development order and certificate of concurrency for Waterside Chiropractic Expansion Project. And this is a judicial hearing, um, so therefore there's some swearing in needed. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, items number 14 through 18 are quasi-judicial hearings of the city of Lynn Haven, so if anyone has any um, plans to provide any testimony before item, on items 14 through 18. Please go ahead and stand and raise your right hand. It's the testimony you're going to provide is the truth upon penalty of perjury. I do. Uh, thank you. And um, also on items 14 through 18, if there's any um, ex parte communications by the, communi by the commission with uh, uh, the parties involved with any of those items, if you could please go ahead and disclose those on the record now. I have had none. I have had none. I've had none. I've had none, and I've had none. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Um, at this time on item 14, um, is there any um, um, information from staff? Or are there, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, <clears throat> this, this item is a development order approval application. The project is Waterside Chiropractic. It's for a building addition. The applicant is Mr. Uh, Dr. Michael Smith, and the agent is Jeffrey Peterman from Panhandle Engineering, but I think perhaps Chris Forehand is here in his stead tonight. The location is 3210 Highway 77. The land use is commercial. The property size is approximately 1.269 acres, and the doctor is proposing a 1,784 square foot addition um, onto the existing uh, building which is located on that parcel so that he can provide additional services to his patients. This is an aerial shot which shows you the location of Waterside Chiropractic. I think probably most people are familiar with where it is. Um, this in your packet was the site plan. Um, the addition is in the bold dashed lines there um, towards the right hand side. And um, this is one of the renderings of um, how the building will look. Okay. Are there questions or discussion from the board regarding item number 14? Are there any questions from the public for our city planner, uh, Ms. Amanda Richard, or for the engineer, Chris Forehand? Okay, there appears to be a question. If you would just identify, your, you could stand in place if you want since she's at the podium and just identify yourself again and ask the question. No, um, it's not spot building, and there was a traffic study submitted, and um, yes, it's, and it's fine, yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions <coughs> from the public? Okay, thank you. At this time, um, is there a motion for acceptance? I'll so move. Second. There's been a 
motion and a second. We've asked for questions and discussion. Um, is there any more from the board? Okay. Mr. Schubert, please call the roll. Commissioner Shad. Aye. Commissioner Friend. Yes. Commissioner Barnes. Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook. Yes. Mary Anderson. Yes. Um, so the motion stands approved. Uh, moving to item number 15. This is discussion and possible action regarding approval of development order and certificate of concurrency for the apartments at 18th Street and Virginia Avenue. And you need to swear in again. No, I covered everybody. Uh, Ms. So. Richard, if you don't mind. This is a second development order approval application. The project this time is for an apartment development, which is going to be comprised of two duplex units. Um, the applicant is James Finch and Associates, and the agent is James Lenina from Panhandle Engineering, and again, Chris Forehand is here in his stead. The location is the southwest corner of 18th Street and Virginia Avenue. The existing land use is mixed use, which does allow for duplexes. It allows for multifamily units and not just single family homes. The size is approximately 0 0.43 acres. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, the applicant is proposing to construct two duplex apartments of 3,396 feet in size each. This is the aerial which shows the location on the corner there. There, there was formerly um, an old single family home on there, I believe, but it's now a vacant parcel. And this is what is being proposed. So two duplex um, buildings. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Are there questions or discussion from the board? Questions or discussion from the public on this item? Yes, ma'am. If you just identify yourself and then... There's four units, so yes, so two duplex buildings, each has two units in, so four units, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Mayor? Yes. If, if I may, and this is, I believe, going to be a minor issue, but I just wanted to mention there's still some discussion about the water main that's run to this property. We're still working with the developer and the engineer on it. It, it, it's actually been taken care of. Has it? Yes, the developer is going to install a four-inch main. That's perfect. Happy Valentine's okay. Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there any other discussion or questions about item 15? At this time, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? I don't believe is we've had a motion. motion. Yeah. I thought I'd ask for a motion. I'm, I'm so sorry. Moved. Is, is there a motion? Move, I'll move we approve. I'll second. second. Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Now, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mary Anderson? Yes. The motion stands approved. Okay, um, moving to item number 16. This is a discussion and possible action regarding approval of development order and certificate of concurrency for Hope Radiation Cancer Center expansion project. Uh, Ms. Richard, if you don't mind, a report for this item. This again is a development order application. Um, the project this time is Hope Radiation Center. The applicant is Dr. Hassan Merched, and the agent is Jeff Britton from Dewberry Preborish, but we have Chris Short here in his stead this evening, if there's any questions. Um, the location is 2900 Highway 77. I think people are probably familiar with its location next to the Dairy Queen. Uh, the existing land use is commercial and the size of the property is 1.22 acres. Dr. Mached is proposing to construct a 4,600 square feet two-story addition onto the existing Hope Radiation Cancer Treatment Center so that he can treat more patients. Uh, there, this is the aerial which shows you the location. Um, the site plan here, it's hard for the, the people in the audience to make out, but the proposed addition is going to be where the, the grass, anybody who's familiar with that building will know that there's some grass in between the building and the parking. Uh, that's where the two-story addition is going to go. Uh, parking has been increased to meet the requirements of the additional patients, as has stormwater. So those facilities have been, the infrastructure has been um, looked at and has been increased to accommodate the expansion. Um, I will mention that initially when we looked at it, we 
had questions as to whether there was going to be adequate parking, um, but a lot of that space is actually taken up by an additional vault, and a treatment vault can only hold one patient at a time, even though it's a significant square footage, it has to have special um, walls and insulation and so forth. Um, are there questions or discussion from the board regarding this expansion project? I move approval. Second. There's been a motion for approval and a second. Any further discussion from the board or questions for Ms. Richard or the engineer? Any from the public? Okay, at this time, Mr. Schubert, if you would call the roll. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Um, so the motion stands approved. And I would just like to add that I'm delighted to hear about this expansion for this particular project because it means so many people don't have to travel for treatment um, to other areas. And we all know people who have been touched, their families, by cancer. And so very thankful this is an expansion in Lynnhaven. Um, item number 17, um, discussion and possible action regarding approval of the preliminary plot for Bailey Point townhomes. And again, this is a, a hearing, and so if you have discussion about our, our, our um, information for us, Ms. Richard, please. This is a preliminary plat approval, so the preliminary plat isn't recorded. Um, after the infrastructure goes in, then we have a final plat, and that's the plat that's recorded. But this is preliminary plat for a project which is located on the other side of the Bailey Bridge. Uh, Bailey Point Townhomes is the name of the project. The applicant is Bailey Point LLC. Agent Jeffrey Peterman, Panhandle Engineering, or Chris Forehand this evening. The location is 6220 House of Seafood Drive. Um, I think people that have been residents of um, Lynn Haven for some time will remember a time when there was a restaurant there. I don't remember that, but there apparently was a restaurant there, House of Seafood Drive. The existing land use is commercial, which does allow for um, multifamily units, so it allows for townhomes. The size is 1.692 acres, and what's being proposed there by the water are 12 townhome units. This shows the location, the aerial here shows the location. Um, the units will have parking underneath them. And um, this is the plat, this is the preliminary plat which shows how the units will be um, split out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there a motion and a second for acceptance? So move approval. Okay. So I'll second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or discussion from the board regarding the preliminary plat? Appear to be none. Any discussion from the public or questions? Yes, ma'am. They're going to have parking underneath and then have two livable stories above. Yes. 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 Thank you. Anyone else have a question or discussion? Okay. At this time, um, there's been a motion and a second. Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll for item number 17? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So item number 17 is approved. Moving to item number 18, um, discussion and possible action regarding approval of the development order and certificate of concurrency for Bailey Point townhomes. This, this is the development order um, which goes um, hand in hand with the preliminary plat which we just um, had. So again, Project Bailey Point Townhomes, um, applicant Bailey Point LLC, the agent Jeff, Jeffrey Peterman, Panhandle Engineering, and the location 6220 House of Seafood Drive. Land use commercial, size 1.692 acres, proposing 12 townhome units. Again, the aerial, um, and this time this is a site plan, and I'll just mention that, yes, the townhomes will have three bedrooms with parking underneath. There will be shared amenities. Proposed uh, amenities include um, a deck with five boat slips and gazebos. The stormwater system, internal roads, and dock will remain private and be maintained by a homeowners association. The development order application was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission on October 4th, 2016, and that was all eyes. Thank you. Um, there's been a motion and a second I believe, for this item. Um, is there any further discussion or questions from the board? Just for the public edification, what I'm looking at here is seven waterfront and five 
non-waterfront and I guess the amenities, some of which will be on the beach and others will be between the two structures. Is that correct? The, the amenities, as is, is far as I know, are all going to be out towards the front. In between the structures, I think it's just, you know, like a, um, a common area. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just trying to get a picture out to everybody of what it's going to look like. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have any renderings. Sure. Okay. And I don't have marked that I ask for a motion in a second. So just for the record, could we please do that again, even if we so did So moved. It? Second. <laughs> Thank you. There's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hey, Mr. Schubert, please call the roll for item number 18. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mary Anderson? Yes. So item number 18 is approved. Thank you, Ms. Richards. Can I just yes. mention one thing? Yes. Um, I, for all, the, the, all of the development orders that have come before you tonight, um, I forgot to mention, sorry, um, City Manager, that when those items went to the Planning Commission, they were all approved by the pl Planning Commission and they were all eyes. Thank you for, for all of the know, items. Letting us know that. Um, if you. you weren't able to hear um, sh what uh, Ms. Bridger was saying, that all of these items, which we have just discussed, uh, um, have been approved um, by the Planning Commission before they came to the board, and she had just forgotten to say that. Thank you. Um, moving then to item number 19, this is resolution 2017-02-671. This is for the Community Aesthetic Feature Agreement for the South Gateway Monument. Uh, Mr. Schubert, are you ready with that resolution? Yes. Resolution number 2017-02-671, a resolution authorizing the City of Lynn Haven to enter into an agreement with the State of Florida Department of Transportation in a Community Aesthetic Features Agreement. Okay. Um, is there any uh, question or discussion from the Board regarding this resolution? Any questions or discussion from the public? Yes, sir. Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. If I remember correctly, years ago, when this project first came up, uh, this was under the CRA. Um, and a lot of water has gone underneath, the, through the ditches. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I want to thank you for thanking the uh, people for the staff for cleaning the ditches. But you forgot one thing. What about the citizens that were out there cleaning the ditches also? I'd like to thank them. Back to the subject. Thank you. The CRA on this project, um, a lot of water has gone by and a lot of time and a lot of controversy over this. Is this just to approve the agreement, entering into the agreement with FDOT, or is it the approval of the whole project? I'm asking the mayor. You're asking mayor? Um, my, my understanding of this is that this, this project, and Please correct me if I'm wrong because this started long before me, but my understanding is that this project was approved um, uh, months and months ago to put this lighthouse um, monument uh, at, the, at the south gateway of Lynn Haven beside Tind Tyndall Federal Credit Union, and that has been changed now to Baldwin Avenue, and my understanding is this resolution is to approve placing it there. Is that correct? Yes, the agreement with DOT to put it in their right-of-way. It's FDOT's right-of-way, yes. which is state property, right? They're right away. And I'll go back to my original point, outside the CRA. Thank you. Well, in that... I know, I know the attorney has said that, but that property is outside the CRA. May I, may I comment, Mayor? Sure. Uh, yeah. Mr. Walker, this, is, this preceded me as well as, as city manager. Um, I've spoken at length with staff and some other former CRA and Regardless of what is on this sign, the, the previous location was 17th Street, as you stated, at Tyndall, and this was supposed to denote the CRA. Well, you're a, you're a good, great steward of this city, citizen. You, you're familiar with all that. A lot of folks driving that live in the city every day aren't familiar with what the CRA is. They are familiar where the city limits are. And what we thought made the most sense was to put this at the south boundary akin to what's on the north boundary, this is just a scaled down version, and put welcome to Lynn Haven. As such, this is not coming out of CRA funds, this is necessarily coming out of the general fund. So this is no longer a CRA project. Right. Uh, yeah. we, we, think it makes a, we think it makes a lot more sense because that. Panama City is essentially landlocked with Lynn Haven there, and, and that line's not going to move. While we may grow further across like that last project, the bridge, but 
think it makes a lot more sense for the citizens. The sign's bought and paid for about two or three years ago. We finally found a home for it. So, that's that. Thank you for the clarity on that one. Sure. Because that's where uh, my hang-up was on that one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion for acceptance of resolution um, 2017-02671? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion from the board or the public? Okay, Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll for item number 19? Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So this resolution has been approved. Um, moving to item number 20, this is resolution 2017-02-672, amending the purchasing procedural guide. Uh, Mr. Schubert, are you ready with that one? Yes, ma'am. Resolution number 2017-02-672, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending various chapters of the City's purchasing procedural guide, amending the local purchasing preference for certain qualified vendors and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for acceptance? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion from any of the board members? Um, I did have a comment um, as I was looking at um, the purchasing procedural guide. Um, there's, there are changes made to several chapters, and some of the changes are, are quite significant. And I had requested yesterday at the workshop a copy, a red line copy, so that I could compare and see what had been changed, what would be different, what is new. Um, without having all of us to carry the, the bulky ordinance uh, manuals about and, and try to, to figure that out looking back and forth. So we have been presented those red line copies today, which makes it much more clear to me what, you know, what the desire is about changing this manual. And I would personally feel much more comfortable if this item could be tabled, if there's not a reason what has to be done today um, until the next meeting to give time for perusal and further study. Any reason it couldn't be? No, no. Uh, I sent it out two weeks ago to vet it, uh, but I don't, I don't think we're... The, the only thing pending is one of the main reasons I wanted to look at this was because of a contract that we attempted to, to let that I wasn't convinced that our procedures gave us the best opportunity to gain the most financial savings from a qualified bidder. Uh, I still think we have plenty of time to do that, so I mean, no objection from me. Thank you. Anybody be willing to make a motion since I'm the leader of the meeting? I think we already have a motion. A motion. Well, a motion to postpone it, though. I think there's a motion to approve it. Don't we have to defeat that first? You have to withdraw. Withdraw it. Is there a motion to withdraw the approval and, um, and then a new motion to table? It, I, it wouldn't I'm, necessarily be a motion to withdraw. It would just be you'd have to withdraw this motion and then the second would withdraw. I'll withdraw the motion. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there a, do we need to, we do make, need to make a motion to table this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there a motion to table the resolution? So moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any from the public? Mr. Schubert, please call the roll. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Thank you. And, I, and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for, for agreeing to table that. Uh, and, and to Mr. Schubert's credit, he did. I have had this on my desk for two weeks and have been trying to get through it, but it's made it much. Um, I appreciate the staff efforts to redline it and make it more clear. So thank you very much. Um, moving on to item um, 21 um, resolution 2017 02 673, creating an infrastructure tax oversight committee. Uh, Mr. Schubert? Resolution 2017-02-673, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, creating an infrastructure tax oversight committee, defining the duties of such committee, establishing qualifications, terms, and procedures for appointment, and removal of committee members, and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is there a motion for acceptance? So moved. And second. a second. Thank you. Any discussion or questions from the board? Any discussion or questions from the public regarding this? Yes, sir. Rich Walker, 1106 Michigan Avenue. In a recent discussion with the State of Florida Ethics Committee, I brought up the uh, question of form number one. Uh, form number one is quite explicit. And 
your terminology that you use for setting up boards, committees, commissions, kind of leads to a problem. Because if you denote the board as a board, a commission, and you appoint them there, they have to fill out form number one. Form number one, paragraph two, states that if it is purely an advisory board or advisory, that they do not have to use form one. Paragraph six of the statute says that if the city of Lynn Haven, as a municipality, requires the people to fill in form number one, then they have to do that. You use the term committee here. That does not fit in with form number one and the ethics. I would like to make sure that this commission, when it sets up a board, it denealinates and specific as to what this is. Is it a board? Is it an advisory group? Is it a committee? Is it a commission? Because the ramifications of form number one are very explicit and put the applicant on the spot. May I, may I interrupt just for a moment? I promise I'll give you back the time that I take from, from what you're saying. But this, this is specifically called an oversight committee, and it's set up by what Bay County has delineated for all the municipalities. Mm -hmm. I understand. And back to your question about the form, um, we really didn't have to have a form for this. Um, and actually, I, I was pretty much instrumental in pushing about a form. And the reason that we wanted a form was to give everyone who would be interested in participating in this committee an opportunity to be perused or looked at for selection. Because what we have, have agreed upon um, and, and discussed is that each member of this board, including the mayor, would be allowed to select one member of the community to serve on this oversight committee. And so just to arbitrarily try to think of someone that I think would be good or that I think would be a person who would be, you know, uh, a good uh, citizen to do this, um, and also to know if this person lives within the city limits and is a qualified elector in Lynn Haven. So the form is, is more, more for our information of who is interested and who is qualified. It's not trying to limit who would be on this or trying to declare this a board. So it's, it's just an informational type form. It's a generic form. So I understand. Ahead, I understand that and you completely. Have a minute, you have I, a minute and 45 left. I, I took understand away that you. completely. But what I'm saying here is that form, if you invoke it, and, and the, your terminology is what invokes it, it can limit it. Some of the people would not like to fill out that form. Mayor, may I ask sure, a question? Go, go ahead. I think I think we're talking about two different forms. An application. Application, and you're talking about form one, form which, one. which is what we have to fill out. Um, no, and no, everybody, according to uh, access committee right, right now. Right, well, in, in addition to what, uh, but what I'm saying is, I think you're talking about the application. application. Okay, yeah, and you're talking the about the form one. That's right, separate those. Two different this things. This is two different things. What I'm getting at here is, okay. don't limit yourself to the citizens. Some of them won't sign it, so they won't join this committee. They won't, they won't apply. You're going to find that out because I'm finding it out now. Uh, people, the terminology you use sets the criteria for the state of Florida to come down with a public request, the same ones that you sign, financial disclosure is what it is. Okay. And, and I just wanted to make sure that you use your right terminology to allow a lot of people to apply that would normally not apply with that form yeah. being invoked. And I think we've all we've used the application you, for a committee member, have yeah. we not? Well, and, and I think I mean Mr. Walker brings up a good point. There's there's there are ad hoc committees, and then there are committees that are in our charter in our code. And mm -hmm. depending on the quality and how and how the committee is described, it may be subject to what the state law says as far as an appointed member that has to disclose their financials. I don't know the answer to that question and and, and where the scope of that is. I will be happy to find that out and bring that back to the the. Um, uh, Mr. Commission next Mr. next Mr. Time. Schubert just just ventured down that road. He has a uh, file in with the ethics committee dealing with one of the boards, and I've called the state of Florida on this to find out what information. But this is a sideline subject. I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that if you deneliate and tell the people that they're going to be on a board. Right. The state of Florida is going to get involved. Right. Thank you for that information. Appreciate that. And, and you but I, is my understanding if it's a committee, they don't have to do it. That's my one. understanding too. But a board, I, they do have to form one. I, 
I, because I, they I, are making, um, you know, this committee is just oversight. It's just going to mm -hmm. check the check, cross the T's and dot the I's, make sure we did what we're. But a board is different. A board advises, just like the planning. That's why that's in, important that she, you know, tells us, and it's in our packet that the planning board approved it. So anyway. But I think the attorney made an, an important yeah. point too. What he just said. Right. About it's a committee that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, my, I would gather that it would be a delegation of authority or some kind of statutory authority that would trigger the form one. But I don't know that, and so I'll be happy to bring that back my, to you all. Just real quick, my recollection the last time we researched this was it was less about the nomenclature of, uh, of what it was tabled as and, and more what the duties were. Mm -hmm, so exactly. like the Leisure Services Board that the mayor was talking about would probably less apt to fill out that financial disclosure than, than something that was approving or, or at least oversight of million-dollar projects. I, well, since, since the attorney um, has advised us that there is some room for you know, gray area or discretion from the state, it might be um, wise, in my opinion, that he would look into it. Uh, but my, my advice is that, I mean, unless you all are concerned about the Form 1 and whether that's required, then I would go ahead with the committee appointments as, as, and, as you've got, and then we can tweak, either tweak the, 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 the duties or clarify what is required Later on, if we need to. Uh, Mayor, Mayor, may I add to that? Sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's an answer that we could probably get within the next 24, 48 mm -hmm. hours max. And I think we could clarify it online. This form is available online. Uh, we mentioned it yesterday in the workshop. It's actually been out there since last week. And, and we could certainly add whether this committee would be required for an annual financial disclosure within the next 48 hours. Mm -hmm. So, so we would know prior to our appointments or recommend appointments next time that they are or are not going to be subject to the form one okay right and, and the idea was that as the mayor stated we'd have a list of names each commissioner would nominate one and, and certainly it, by the, uh, the 28th our next meeting two weeks from now we would have that answer we'll have it in two days so. okay. any any further discussion or questions about this item There's a motion and a, yeah. Okay, at this time, would you please call the roll for approval of the resolution? Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. <coughs> Commissioner Friend? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So the resolution stands approved. And then um, item 22 is resolution 2017-02674, special administrative exception application for villages of Mill Bayou, Shoreline Village, Phase 1C, DNH properties. Mr. Schubert, do you have that one? Yes, resolution number 2017-02-674, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, amending and established traditional neighborhood development, or TND, administrative exception overlay district for Shoreline Village Phase 1, making findings under section 04.05.06F of the Unified Land Development Code, ULDC, modifying the front-facing garage requirement for Phase 1C of the existing overlay district and providing an, immediately, an immediate effective date. Is there a motion for acceptance of the resolution? So moved. Second. And there's been a second. Any questions from the board for city staff or the city manager? Any questions from the public regarding this resolution? Okay, Mr. Schubert, please call the roll. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? Yes. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. The item is approved. The final resolution for this evening, uh, Resolution 2017-02675, is approving special exceptions to allow consumption of alcoholic beverages during certain annual city events. Is there a motion for acceptance? <coughs> so moved. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Are there any questions or concerns from the board? Any questions or concerns from the public? There appears to be none. Mr. Schubert, would you please? I'm sorry, I need to read the resolution. I apologize. Resolution number 2017-02-675, a resolution of the City of Lynn Haven, Florida, approving special exceptions to allow consumption of alcoholic beverages on designated public properties and right, rights of way for certain annual city events 
delegating authority to establish time and location restrictions and additional rules regarding alcoholic beverages for such events to the city manager and providing an effective date. Thank you. I apologize. I forgot to ask you to read it. Um, any questions or concerns from anyone? Mr. Schubert, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Ashbrook? Yes. Commissioner Shad? Aye. Commissioner Friend? No. Commissioner Barnes? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Yes. So resolution has passed. And then we move to the final um, item on our agenda this evening, which is public commentary. If there's anyone from the public who has any um, item or concern or question that you'd like to bring before the board, this would be your opportunity. Everyone appears to be content to move forward with their Valentine. Oh, excuse me. Um, come forward, please. Mr. Miller. My name is Leon Miller, 1508 Mississippi Avenue. Uh, I come before the board today to say this is a very special month across this country. This is what we prefer to as Black History Month, to celebrate the contribution that the blacks made to uh, this United States in many ways. And I felt real good sitting in here today, listening at you going over city business, because it carried me back to make history right here in Lynn Haven, because I was the first Afro-American to be elected to the city commission here in Lynn Haven, and you're doing a good job, and this city is moving on in many ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. And, and I would also like to apologize to you, Mr. Miller, for not having the foresight to bring up um, Black History Month at this commission meeting. Um, very involved as, as a teacher, retired 13 days. Um, always and <laughs> always, always, yeah, two hours and always to bring up, you know, um, the, the wonderful contributions that have been made. But um, I would... I would certainly like for all of us, I know we're tired, it's been a long meeting, but if we could just, in recognition of the accomplishments, and especially to honor Mr. Miller as being the first elected city commissioner, um, the African American commissioner, could we please stand and give him a round of applause for all of his accomplishments. <laughs> would anyone else on the board like to address Mr. Miller? At this time, I declare this meeting adjourned. Have a happy Valentine's Day.